This epidemic, for one, was very unexpected and hit us all at an instant. First schools closed, then malls, movie theaters, stores, restaurants. It was a new but hectic experience for all of us. We have all had to adapt abruptly to a new curriculum, which was quite challenging for students, administrators, and teachers alike. As I reflect on the things that I lost and found during this pandemic, I first challenged myself to define loss. Of loss superficially, I think as deprivation of someone or something of value. But honestly, that just isn't enough coming from me. In the beginning of 2020, Keys and Powers Youth was finishing up their second annual bar exam contest. And thanks to T. Rowe Price, the studio equipment allowed for Keys and Powers to audition students from varying schools who were aspiring songwriters, singers, and rappers. Since 2019, students competed and over 1,000 students voted for winners as they made amazing uplifting songs about what they wanted to do, including a song about 2020 in the beginning. 2020, this is my year. I'ma make sure I live with no fear. I'ma make sure I take over the game. When I leave here, you gon' know my name. Time's up, I ain't playing no fair games. I wanna be in Hall of Fame. I'm gonna make sure that I'll conquer everything that comes my way. Step one. And then the COVID pandemic hit. I think what was crazy about COVID was the abrupt changes in our lives. You know, um, students could no longer, we were so used to being able to interact with the students and um, create through presence. Uh, but when we, you know, when the pandemic hit, obviously we couldn't see each other. So we had to find a way to be creative and, and, and stimulate creativity uh, from afar through uh, Zoom and other mediums in the computer. And that's, you know, that's kind of big and hard. The first things that come to mind are the loss of my routine, my day-to-day -day grind. Homework, school, home, sports, recreation, and work. Maybe the loss of my social life or that in-person daily interaction that nearly everyone my age depends on. You know that intimacy of just being able to be near your friends and being able to make plans and go to the mall or movies or just go out to eat. So we needed to improvise and create a program that would help students across their devices deal with the challenges they were facing. Um, we started the Art and Soul Creative Storytelling and Music Therapy program. Um, and one of the things I did was I created a social media platform so that people could upload profiles, upload um, videos, and photos, um, something that you know you're used to doing when you know when in the age of Instagram and TikTok and things like that. Uh, by doing that. You know, my hope was that, my thought was that it would also help stimulate creativity. I got one. Yeah, go ahead. Um, failure humbles. Oh, you just did the whole, just did the whole, uh, the whole phrase. I got you. Somebody. I got one. I got one. What you got, Connor? Trust expires. Woo. Now y'all catching, catching it. Tables turn. Y'all going in. Tables turn. Tables turn. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Um, words have so much power. The words that we speak have so much power. The words that we think and put into the atmosphere have so much power. So what, mind what you say, but get it out. You can do it to music. You can do it without music. Get your feelings out. Get them on paper. And then start working with Mr. Mr. Ish. Reasons soon. But for now, um, First thing I want to do is just kind of get where everybody is from. So to kind of help them stimulate, you know, not only just doing art without a purpose, but doing art with purpose and actually to teach them about purpose and life. Because the reality is, is that when we have purpose, we actually have an ability to take ownership of our lives. When we don't have purpose, that's actually how we end up getting taken advantage of and how we get underrepresented. So our, our focus was on purpose. What is the reason why you're telling the story? What are you saying? Why are you saying it? And analyzing what other people are saying about you and understanding where you're trying to go. Uh, we gave, um, I'll say that students gave very astute opinions about and expressions about what happened in 2020. Uh, they talked about what happened with respect to George Floyd, with, with respect to the Capitol building, with respect to um, um, their own schooling and their own personal lives, how the adjustments were. 
And it was really beautiful to watch them kind of come up with and, and bring their own narrative to our platform. Man, if I'm in one spot for a long period of time, I'm gonna run into an officer and they go, ask for ID, identification, all this. I don't wanna give it to them. I ask them why, cause I know it's no reason, but I still gotta do it. Mm -hmm. Still gotta do it right. You ever think like, do, do you ever have times when you're like, I'm not, I don't wanna give it to you or you don't? Yeah, but they just make it more persistent. They're not gonna leave until I give it to them. Right, and then so you end up giving it to them. Then after it's over, what does it make you feel like? Degraded. Degraded. Like I lost my rights just because I'm black. Do you feel like something changed with the George Floyd thing, or was it just a moment? But it ain't really not a change. I feel like it was just a moment. I don't really feel like nothing changed. Like I just seen somebody getting beat up by the police the other day for no reason because they thought he was selling drugs and he wasn't. And he was talking back. I don't feel like it changed. I just felt like everybody opened up their eyes for a little second. I feel like it's, it's too normalized. This shouldn't be normal for us. And it is because I, I had to realize that my cousin, he little, so we ride around the city. Why is it, why is this person bent over like that? Why is there so many boarded up houses on this block? They not knowing, I'm just thinking that it's normal for real. And it's not. When another brother becomes a hashtag, falling a victim to the unfortunate circumstances we face, we used to be the supreme race. Said, why you mad at me? Cause we ain't got the same color face. Used to get sprayed with hoses, but now we sprayed with mace. Rather rioting and protest because we taking a stand. Won't sit around while the police kill another black man and the worst they getting is fired. Not no time in a can. How old do I gotta be to be considered a threat? They out here killing kids too, they shot to mirror his chest. But a Karen can get on camera like she all in distress. She lets white loot to target while stabbing blacks. I guess she needed that check. Cat took a knee for our rights, but George Floyd, he took a knee to the neck. And no black on black crime is not a thing because there's no such thing as white on white. Forever screaming we can't breathe as we continue to fight. We call them 12, but they ain't 12. They know the difference between wrong and right. Beat the streets with our feet marching from day to the night. Martin Luther King was doing it peaceful, but they shot him on sight. Malcolm X was speaking his facts and he was shining his light. They got him killed on the inside. His own people took his life. Black lives matter, we know yes. Supreme beings all over the US and they rather show a riot before they show a damn protest. And all lives matter it is just a protest to my protest and I won't stand down to all those officers are under arrest. Mr. Floyd, fly high. I know your family distress. However, in defining what loss was, I feel like I was being superficial. I personally believe loss is imperative in order for you to grow, gain acquisition, and to just move on in life. It's kind of like yin and yang. One cannot gain or grow without losing something. It's all a part of life. But as my mom says, we didn't lose my aunt, she only moved on. So that made me think, are we really losing or are we just changing? So what have I found? Honestly, this may have been one of the worst ways to be introduced, but I found a stark introduction to the world, to life, to growth, and to myself. It wasn't until I lost access to everything, or so I thought, that I've realized that I am free to do or create whatever it is I want in life. This pandemic has almost forced me, in particular, to be more resourceful and self-dependent. So ultimately, I found me. I found the freedom to be me. I've watched as both parents suffered from financial losses through their employment. We improvised and made some major adjustments in our spending habits, yet still we prevailed. I found their resilience to be inspiring to me. At first, I didn't know how to insert myself what to do or how to support them. But as we each created our own new normals, I realized that just being there together as a family was all they really needed from me. I soon learned to self-navigate. I lost a sense of entitlement and found that just saying black lives matter just isn't enough. And just like in the social movement, in order for change to occur, we must lose. Lose our perception of differences, expectations, and limitations. 
Whether our loss is as minimal as dapping your homeboy up in the hallway in between classes, not going to your junior prom, losing a family member, or the tragic loss of people like George Floyd, loss is inevitable. And it isn't until we have lost something and we learn who we are and appreciate what we have that we begin the transformation of growth. During this pandemic, it was in this growth that I found a smart, matured, creative person. All in all, I believe the coronavirus was a troubling experience for me, but with all things, what's life without a little challenge?